Hey, what are you doing? How are you? Nick DiGilio here. 31 Days of Horror continues. Uh, each day I am posting a review, just a quick review of a horror movie that you should watch for each day for Halloween month. Uh, October, the greatest month of all time. Halloween, the greatest uh, uh, holiday of all time. There should be no other holidays, just Halloween. Um, and uh, I'm just trying to you know, randomly select a bunch of horror movies. What I did was, as I explained at the beginning of each of these videos, is I went to my closet where I keep all my DVDs, my Blu-rays, and other stuff, and I grabbed a bunch of them, and I've randomly stacked them up next to me. So I don't know what I'm going to grab. And each day, I'm going to tell you quickly about a great horror movie that you should watch to celebrate Halloween. One movie a day, 31 horror movies for each day of October. Um, this will be number five. Very quickly, please donate to my Patreon page. It helps out a lot. Anything that you can donate would be helpful. You'll get some bonus materials, and it'll help me continue my podcast, continue these videos, continue to do stuff that I want to do that I'm not doing uh, for money. So I, I would love it if you, if you donated. Patreon.com slash Nick D Show. Donate now. Patreon.com slash Nick D Show. Please give. Check out my podcast, Nick D Podcast, every Tuesday and Friday. New episodes. You can check them out. Uh, at RadioMisfits.com or just Google the Nick D Podcast. It's on every platform. It's all free. Uh, and also, please come out to the live edition of the Nick D Podcast that Esmeralda Leon and I will be hosting at Zanies in Rosemont. Tuesday, November 15th. Buy your tickets today. Order them now. Please get your tickets. Let's pack the place. Live, me, Esmeralda, having a lot of fun, telling great stories. We'll have surprise guests. We have giveaways and prizes and stuff that we're going to be giving away. You can be a part of the live podcast as well. So get your tickets right now. Rosemont.zanies.com. Rosemont.zanies.com. The Nick D Podcast live at Rosemont Zanies on November 15th, Tuesday. Okay, what's next here? I randomly went into my closet, grabbed a whole bunch of DVDs, threw them next to the coffee table, and I'm randomly grabbing one right now. All right. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> uh, one horror movie a day for the entire month of October. So that makes 31. Here's number five. Uh, Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer. Okay. Uh, wow. All right. Uh, I happen to be friends with the director of this movie. Uh, I am friends with Mr. John McNaughton, um, who is one of the coolest, one of the nicest, one of the most amazing dudes I've ever met. Um, the fact that I know him is astonishing to me, and the fact that I have talked to him on a regular basis is amazing. The fact that he came out to a screening that I did, that I hosted of his movie, uh, Normal Life, uh, he came out and it was at the screening. He spoke to everybody afterwards and signed a whole bunch of DVDs and all kinds of cool stuff. He's a really cool guy, and he and he's making he's he's making new movies and all kinds of stuff. He's worked on so many cool things. He's directed so many uh, great great movies, including Mad Dog and Glory and Wild Things. And I mentioned Normal Life. Uh, he's a tremendous film. Borrowers uh, is a great film. He's a tremendous filmmaker, an incredible guy, lifetime Chicago and Southside dude. He and I have argued about the Sox over the Cubs constant, many times. He came out to see my play, Black and Blue, which was about the Cubs and Sox rivalry told through the eyes of two brothers, one Cub fan, one Sox fan. He came out, by the way, on the same day as Andy Davis, the director of The Fugitive, and Tony Fitzpatrick, amazing actor and artist, friend of mine as well. Those three dudes sat in the house to watch a play. I didn't tell the, I didn't tell the, I directed the show and I co-wrote it. I did not tell the cast that they were coming out to see it. You know, because when the director of this movie and the director of the, you know, The Fugitive and other great films and Tony Fitzpatrick show up, legendary, incredible artists from the south side of Chicago, by the way, all three are south siders. Um, I did not tell the cast. Um, all three of the guys, including John, loved the play. It was fantastic. So anyway, McNaughton, an amazing filmmaker. This uh, is one of the most, uh, terrifying movies you'll ever see. There's no supernatural, there are no supernatural elements involved in this. There are no, you know, crazy transformative special effects. There are gore effects in it and some makeup effects. Um, but there's nothing sort of supernatural and ooh, scary about it. This is about an, a fucking psycho, played by Michael Rooker, who, by the way, is also a really nice guy. I'm sure if you've gone to flashback horror conventions, or you've, you've, you've met him, he's an incredibly nice guy and an unbelievably funny dude, and Gain, gain, gained a lot of traction in the last, you know, 10 years or so with the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. Last, like, 5, 10 years. So people know who he is. And he's, you know, he's a walking dead, obviously. So people know him. But he's also just a really incredibly nice guy and unbelievably funny. And a great guy to drink with. I've had a few beverages with Michael Rooker. Uh, but he's terrifying in this movie. And it's shot, it was shot here in Chicago on an ultra-low budget. Um, and uh, Tom Tolles uh, plays a guy named Otis his buddy uh, Henry, 
and they go around killing people. Uh, and it's about a serial killer. So from the point of view of a serial killer and his best friend Otis and what happens when Otis's sister comes to town and uh, that throws a monkey wrench into, you know, the killings and all that stuff. Uh, this is a this is brutal. It's a brutal movie. It is scary as shit. It also so it's also very funny. Oh, I see you've had some college, which is one of my favorite lines ever in movie history. Uh, <laughs> lots of local talent. Richard Fire was involved in this. This uh, this came from the loins of Chicago theater, Chicago actors. Uh, McNaughton working on a shoestring budget, and uh, it took a long time for it to to see the light of day. Uh, I think it got its debut probably, I think it was like four or five years after it was shot. It finally was like people started to see it. And now, of course, it's a legendary movie. It's a classic. It's one of the one of the scariest movies of all time. One of the most legendary lead horror performances ever by Michael Rooker. Um, and, uh, but yeah. So it's, it's Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. And it puts all the shit to shame. Like there's this Dahmer thing that's on Netflix right now, which is just shit. Uh, it's also a exploitive garbage, which I don't think this is. There's a difference between, a lot of people are like, oh, it's, it's very exploitive. No, it's not. It's a, this is a psychological study. This is a terrifying movie. And the reason why it's so terrifying is, uh, one, because it's beautifully made. Two, the budget constrictions of it add to the tone of it, to the scariness of it. Uh, and three, it's a very realistic portrayal of what would happen in this situation. And you're kind of thrown in. And, you know, it, I mean, there's nothing but bad guys in this movie. You know what I mean? Everybody is, like, deeply fucked up and flawed and weird and, you know... So it, there's no normal person to grab onto. Normally you've got, like, the person to guide you through this stuff. There's nobody in there to do that. Um, but the difference between this and all this... And some of the other serial killer shit... Like, like uh, Silence of the Lambs is a piece of shit. Uh, the difference is that, that, like, Silence of the Lambs, you're put in a position to admire one serial killer because he's smart. Oh, isn't he supposed to be? And he's charming. Because he's Anthony Hopkins. And you're supposed to hate the other serial killer because he wears a dress and he might be trans. You know, and I've always found that to be disgusting. And that's one of the many, 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 many reasons. There are several, a million reasons why I fucking hate Silence of the Lambs with every fiber of my being. Um, and why this is such a much, much more superior and much scarier movie. And much more significant and deep and not insulting, you know, and homophobic movie. Um, but anyway... I digress. And this Dahmer thing, which is, I think, just really distasteful. Um, I mean, I've watched three episodes of it. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get through the rest of it. Uh, some of the cast members I like, but it's shit. But this is the granddaddy of them all. This is, like, really scary and a very moral movie. Uh, quick story. The very first time that I saw Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer was when it debuted at the Music Box Theater. Jesus Christ. Many, 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 many years ago. I want to say 88 or 89. Something like that. 89, I want to say. And they debuted it at midnight at the Music Box Theater. And I went with a group of friends. About five of us went. My friend Scott Oaken went to see it. We were all there. And during the home invasion scene where they invade this house and they're going to kill the family and rape and kill. And they record the whole thing on video. And this video, by the way, is something that Otis and Henry watch several times throughout the movie. So they go in, they basically rape and kill a family. They capture it all on videotape. They take the videotape, they bring it back to their shitty apartment, and they watch it over and over again. Uh, during the home invasion scene, which is brutal, which is horrifying, um, Scott got up and walked out. He had to leave. He got up and he walked out into the lobby. He's like, I can't. I can't watch this. The home invasion scene. If you've seen the movie, and you've, you know the home invasion video scene I'm talking about, it's fucking, it's brutal. Scott got up and walked out for like five minutes during the scene, then came back and sat down. We watched the rest of the movie. So needless to say, when the movie was over, we were all like, holy fuck. Because the movie, I don't want to give it away, but he gets away at the end. Yeah. So there's like, like at the end, there's no hope. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you think, okay, well, it, it can't. I mean, then it ends, you know, dead body, sawed up in a suitcase on the side of the road. Henry off to go someplace else and kill. And that's how the fucking movie ends. <laughs> hey, enjoy a drink. I know we did after the movie. So anyway, movie ends, we're sitting in the theater, midnight, music box, after this, Scott, my friend, all of us horrified and impressed by how brilliant the movie is, but completely terrified by it. Uh, and again, that home invasion scene, boom. Now, Tom Tolles, who again, passed away, beautiful guy, another nice guy, incredibly nice guy, could not be nicer, he's fucking terrifying. He's scarier than Henry. Otis is scarier than Henry. If you watch this movie, the character of Otis is more terrifying, and like, I can't even look at this dude. He's fucking terrifying. Tom Tolles is horrifying in Henry as Otis. So the movie ends. We're like, holy crap. You know, the, 
Never saw this movie before. Heard so much about it. Big Chicago premiere. We walk out to the lobby. Who's standing in the lobby? Tom Tolls. Standing in the lobby with people like talking to him. And you, you have to understand, I didn't know who the hell Tom Tolls was at the time. Didn't know him. Maybe I had heard of him in the theater world. I didn't really know who the guy. I had no idea. My exposure to Tom Tolls was what I just saw in this goddamn movie as Otis. So I, we walk out and I'm like, ah! and I see Tom Tolls and he's there. Looks like he looked in the movie. Not He dressed better. But he, there is Tom Tolls. That's Otis. We are fucking six feet away from Otis. Scott would not go near him. Scott's like, I can't. I can't. And we just kind of like, I was like, I waved and was like, yep, nice job. And we walked out. And I like, how, imagine seeing this movie for the first time. Never seen it before. You see the movie, particularly the home invasion scene. Otis enjoying it very much. Uh, and then you see Otis standing in the lobby afterwards. Like, you're traumatized. We were traumatized by this fucking movie. We walk out in the lobby. There's Tom Tolls. There's Otis. We're like, we're going home. And we went to a bar, actually. I think we went to, if I'm not mistaken, we went to Ty's and had some drinks. So, anyway, uh, yeah. But anyway, Tom Tolls was a very nice guy, very lovely dude, a terrific actor who would go on to do so many other really cool things. Michael Rooker, great guy. John McNaughton, if you're watching this, I love you, man, and I can't wait to see your next movie. And you're a great dude, and you made one of the greatest movies of all time, one of the classic horror films of all time. So, all right, randomly chosen for day number, what day is this? Number five. Day number five, Henry, Portrait of a Serial Killer, directed by the one, the only, a Chicagoan. John McNaughton. All right, so enjoy that on day five of all the horror movies. And I will continue to do this uh, through October 31st on Halloween. So, hi, Otis!